Greetings the Astro 30 here yet again and welcome back to AEL. Now if you're new to this channel please consider going down below and subscribing if you haven't done so already. That'll help me out immensely. Anyway today we're going to look at another 555 timer circuit. In this case it's a doorbell circuit. A ding dong doorbell circuit. Now uh, a quick look at the circuit here, we're in a stable operation, which means both states are unstable, so it's uh, neither stable on or stable off, it's an oscillator. The frequency of the oscillation is dependent on the values of these components here. Now, forgetting about this side of the circuit for a minute, uh, with these current values here, now using an online calculator to calculate the frequency of the output here, these two resistors would be considered one. So instead of uh, a single resistor there for R1's value, we've got two. So that's about 94K. So with 94K, 47K and 10 nanofarad, the frequency we will hear out the speaker is around 765 hertz. So that would be a dong sound for all intents and purposes. And, um, We'll also notice that pin 4 is not directly tied to VCC. We'll notice that we've got a switch connected to VCC here. And this switch does three things. Number one, it allows this diode to bypass this resistor. Now, when this resistor is bypassed, we change the frequency. So now, the calculation for the frequency would be just 47K, 47K and 10 nanofarad, respectively which gives us a frequency of roughly 1021.7 hertz thereabouts. So that's our initial ding sound. So the second thing that this switch does is it then brings VCC via this diode to pin four. So this now allows the IC to start oscillating because if pin four is not connected high, it's not gonna do anything. And it also does one more thing. It allows this capacitor down here to charge via this diode. And pin four is also tied low via this 47K resistor. Now, if you were to press and hold the switch, well, this thing will continue to oscillate at just over a kilohertz. Once the switch is released, then power is disconnected from pin 4 but is still allowing pin 4 to be uh, powered because this capacitor now can discharge through pin 4. So it'll go ding and then dong and that's my best impression of a doorbell ever. Um, and the length of time that this goes dong for can be lengthened by increasing the value of this res uh, capacitor here. You don't want to go too high because you don't want it going ding dong Uh, so, yeah. and um, pin 5 is tied low with a 10 nanofarad capacitor according to the day sheet is what you're supposed to do. You should never leave it floating. A lot of people do. I mean, it just helps keep the IC stable. However, through testing, it still remains pretty stable even without it connected to ground. But, whatever. And pin 3's output is taken through this 100 microfarad capacitor to the speaker which is just any 8 ohm speaker like a 57 millimeter, for instance, inside a hobby box. And the supply is bypassed with these two capacitors here. Uh, the thing is, the oscillator will be connected and so will the VCC all the time to the battery. So there's going to be some current draw going through this IC all the time. However, as it's not oscillating, it's not going to be drawing that much current because it's not driving the load here. How long this circuit would operate on just a 9 volt battery? Um, a pretty long time. However, if this circuit was allowed to be constantly turned on, oscillating at the 1020 odd hertz mark there, for like, you know, three or four days in a row without it being turned off, well, yeah, I guess the battery would eventually go fat pretty quickly. But when it's in standby, i.e. the button's not pressed, uh, I reckon that battery would last quite a fair, fair long time. Because I don't think this IC actually draws that much current when it's um, 
not really doing anything. So anyway, there's not much more to talk about this circuit. Uh, I've just given you the basic operation, what the frequencies are going to be. And so now the thing to do would be to build it, test it to make sure it works. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. And then I'll discuss what the next step to this would be. Uh, whether this diode is actually necessary to be in circuit, I guess, yes, yeah, so that the capacitor does not have a discharge path through here. It has a discharge path through here and here. So that would be the reason why there's a diode there. It's not exactly necessary, but it might mean that the capacitor might discharge too quick back through this part of the circuit, which is not what we wanted to do. So let me build it up on a piece of breadboard and we'll test it. It's really windy outside and it's been windy for like three weeks in a row and it's starting to piss me off. Right, and about 10 minutes later after searching for components and stuff, I spent about a good five minutes looking for the speaker driver. Um, it's built and I also had to fault find it because I've already tested it off of camera uh, just to make sure that it does work. Um, normally I wouldn't do that but I was getting nothing happening when I first powered it up. It's only because of the uh, power supply lead connections, the banana socket mainly at the other end of the, the power, the red power lead here. So as we can see it's hooked up to a speaker, that's a 100 microfarad capacitor, 63 volt, that's way overkill. I couldn't be bothered finding a smaller capacitor. So I'll turn the speaker, turn the speaker, turn the circuit on. Now there's an initial pop come out the speaker because remember most of the circuitry inside the 555 timer is still powered except the reset pin. Now, this little red wire floating around symbolizes or simulates my doorbell switch. Isn't that neat? <laughs> that initial uh, squeak at the end is kind of annoying though. But it is pretty loud, even with the speaker not sitting in an um, enclosure. So to simulate an enclosure, which that was a complete fail, I'll pop the speaker driver into the container here. And if I can so get the board to stay still. It sounds, sounds a bit louder, not by much, but I think that is pretty loud um, and loud enough to hear from across a house. Uh, I was just thinking, yeah, I was just thinking how we could uh, probably make that initial ding a little bit longer, but we can't. Ooh. Now, the frequency of the oscillator uh, initial sounds could be changed if we lower this uh, 10 nanofarad capacitor here, uh, 10 nanofarad here, if we lower that value the frequency will be higher, if we increase that value the frequency will be lower. However, I'm currently liking how it sounds, except there's a bit of a switch debounce there which is a problem. But normal people do actually press the button in and then release it. It's just built into our human nature to hear it go ding dong. You know, like press it in ding dong. <laughs> or ding on ding on ding on ding on ding on ding on. Like that. Anyway, I'm going to have fun with this for like, you know, the next couple of hours. But, um,. That's, that's basically it. There's not much else you could do with it. So apart from modifying this capacitor down here to change the frequency, there's not much more you could really do with this circuit. However, you could make this more battery friendly, if you like. You could type in for high, have the 10 microfarad capacitor uh, here at the VCC and ground. You probably remove these components. Remove that diode, that resistor, and that diode, and the switch. Drive an MPN transistor from the switch from the positive, so the battery is connected to the uh, uh, transistor. 
via a 10k resistor into the base. The emitter would go to ground and then the grounds of this circuit would connect to the collector. But however you'd still need to simulate the ding sound, the initial ding sound. So you could also drive a relay from the same transistor as well and effectively short that resistor out via the contacts and as soon as the switch is released it will go ding and then the whole thing will fade out. You may have to muck around with the value of that capacitor until you get the perfect length of duration for the dong sound. But in its current configuration I don't think it's going to cause that much of an issue for battery life. So anyway the next step for me for this is I'll probably build a PCB for it and put it in an enclosure and um, you know test it out inside an enclosure and I may even go out and buy a proper do looking doorbell thing for the switch so hmm. so that'll be an upcoming video anyway I'm going to leave this video here because there's not much more to discuss about it um, if you enjoyed it please remember to go down below comment like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and anyway this is the Astro 30 saying see ya have a great day I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.